Good morning. I am Reverend Wally Wilson, interim pastor of the First Presbyterian Church of Greensburg, Indiana. This is the 5th of July, Communion Sunday, so at this time I invite you to pause the video and to go to your refrigerator and to procure uh, elements for sharing in communion today a bit of bread and some kind of juice uh, and then to come back and hit resume welcome please join me in the call to worship god has set us free in christ we are called to exercise our freedom well Let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Let us confess our sins to Almighty God. Loving God, you have given us a birthright of freedom, but we misuse it. We fail to love others as ourselves. Like Paul, we fail to do what is right. Too proud to ask your help, we abandon our higher aspirations. Guilt from the past, selfishness in the present, and fear for the future distract us from living as your people. Help us, we pray, to live each day as those set free in Christ. Guide us in the sacred work of pursuing true freedom for all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. God in Christ has healed us from the effects of our sin, liberating us from the power of evil. Believe this good news, that in Christ, God has forgiven his people and offers us wholeness in him. Amen. Now please join me in the prayer of illumination. Holy and powerful God, we seek to know you through the poor vehicles of words. May we go beyond hearing to doing. Grant that we may feel your presence, as did the followers who knew Jesus in the breaking of the bread, that we may go out to share good news and to be your means of grace. In the name of your beloved Son, Jesus. Amen. From Matthew 11, verses 28 to 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. From Romans 
chapter 7, verses 15 to 25a. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am! Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God, who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Word of God. The scripture this morning comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 24, verses 34 to 38, 42 to 58, and 66 and 67. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has blessed my master abundantly, and he has become wealthy. He has given him sheep and cattle, silver and gold, male and female servants and camels and donkeys. My master's wife, Sarah, has borne him a son in her old age and he has given him everything he owns. And my master made me swear an oath and said, you must not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I live, but go to my father's family and to my clan and get a wife for my son. When I came to the spring today, I said, Lord God of my master Abraham, if you will, Please grant success to the journey on which I have come. See, I am standing beside this spring. If a young woman comes out to draw water and I say to her, please let me drink a little water from your jar. And if she says, drink, and I'll draw water for your camels too. Let her be the one the Lord has chosen for my master's son. Before I finished praying in my heart, Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder. She went down to the spring and drew water. And I said to her, please give me a drink. She quickly lowered her jar from her shoulder and said, drink and I'll water your camels too. So I drank and she watered the camels also. I asked her, whose daughter are you? She said, the daughter of Bethuel, son of Nahor, whom Milcah bore bore to him. Then I put a ring in her nose and the bracelets on her arms, and I bowed down and worshiped the Lord. I praised the Lord, the God of my father Abraham, who has led me on the right road to get the granddaughter of my master's brother for his son. Now if you will show kindness and faithfulness to my master, tell me. And if not, tell me, so I may know which way to turn. Laban and Bethuel answered, This is from the Lord. We can say nothing to you one way or the other. Here is Rebekah. Take her and go, and let her become the wife of your master's son, as the Lord has directed. When Abraham's servant heard what they said, he bowed down to the ground before the Lord. Then the servant brought out gold and silver jewelry and articles of clothing and gave them to Rebekah. He also gave costly gifts and to her brother and to her mother. Then 
he and the men who were with him ate and drank and spent the night there. When they got up the next morning, he said, send me on my way to my master. But her brother and mother replied, let the young woman remain with us 10 days or so, then you may go. But he said to them, do not detain me. Now that the Lord has granted success to my journey, send me on my way so I may go to my master. Then they said, let's call the young woman and ask her about it. So they called Rebecca and asked her, will you go with this man? I will go, she said. So they sent their sister, Rebecca, on her way, along with her nurse and Abraham's servant and his men. Now Isaac had come from Beer Lahai Roy, for he was living in the Negev. They went out to the field one evening to, me to meditate, and as he looked up, he saw camels approaching. Rebecca also looked up and saw Isaac. She got down from her camel and asked the servant, Who is that man in the field coming to meet us? He is my master, the servant answered. So she took her veil and covered herself. Then the servant told Isaac all he had done. Isaac brought her into the tent of his mother Sarah, and he married Rebecca, and she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Friends, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Yesterday was Independence Day, the day we give thanks to God for our freedom, our liberty. We have tremendous freedoms to speak and act as we want, as long as we're not harming anyone. And yet, how ironic that here many folk don't feel so free. That's what Mark Twain said. It is by the goodness of God that in our country we have these three unspeakably precious things freedom of speech, freedom of conscience, and the prudence never to practice any of them. Today, I invite you to, re to reflect with me on the notion of freedom. Sometimes, the best way to gain an understanding is through stories. Viktor Frankl survived a Nazi death camp and lived to write about it in his famous book, Men's Search for Meaning in which he recalled how even in the horrors of a Nazi prison camp, some prisoners remained free. He wrote about men who walked through the huts comforting others, giving away their last piece of bread. He wrote about the freedom to choose one's attitude regardless of circumstances. And a few minutes ago, we heard another story, the story of Rebecca. And that story prods us to inquire about the meaning of freedom. Had Abraham made a prior arrangement for Rebekah to be his wife's son? In other words, was it an arranged marriage? At first, the men said she had to go. The only time she had any say in the matter was the following morning when her family wanted to keep her around for another 10 days, a move designed to get a richer dowry. So they asked her if she wanted to go, and she was <laughs> content to leave, like women of every age who are treated like chattel, objectified for the gain of others. She had limited freedom, but she used that freedom well. Rebecca's true freedom was awareness of God's activity and her participation in that activity. Rebecca found freedom in accepting God's yoke, living within the covenant of God and God's people. St. Paul had his story. He wrote to the Christians in Rome that he feels anything but free. And as we heard also a few minutes ago, he said, I can decide what I want to do, but I'm powerless to do it. We know all about that. 
We know what it is to watch the words coming out of our mouth, realizing it's too late to put them back inside. There seems to be this gulf between what our minds say and what we actually do. And so St. Paul lamented, who can deliver me from this slavery? So if the definition of freedom is being free to do what we want to do or intend to do, but we are not capable of that, then how free are we? It's Paul's question too. His testimony is that freedom is only found in the covenant relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ. We too have our freedom stories. Doctors and nurses have willingly put themselves in harm's way to try to save the lives of those with COVID-19. Many have died in the process of saving the lives of others. Sometimes the lives of those too arrogant to wear a simple mask. A mask is so much more comfortable than that ventilator. It seems that illness and prevention are really medical matters, not political ones. Disease and death are apolitical. Is freedom best expressed by refusing to wear a mask? By making a statement that you don't care about the health of others? Freedom is not just a political matter, it is a theological one. Freedom is only properly understood as living in a covenant relationship with God and God's people. Our stories around freedom continue. Our story is the almost daily story of violence against people of color. Our story is the story of the woman who called the cops because there's a black man in the park. And we are shocked to find out He's a Harvard graduate, a member of the Audubon Society, and he's bird watching. Our story is the story of the white neighbor calling the police and screaming at a nine year old white girl who chalks on her own sidewalk, Black Lives Matter. It's the fear of every black male that he may be arrested humiliated, perhaps even shot, for walking while black, driving while black, even bird watching while black. We still struggle with freedom for all. Our story is not over. We are not even free from ourselves. We get free in covenant with God who says we are all one body in equally important parts, who says to welcome the stranger, the sojourner, and treat her or him as a citizen. We find freedom by living in covenant with God, by obeying God. Freedom is not doing whatever we want. Freedom can be a problem if we use it irresponsibly. Our democracy gives us freedom but little guidance on how to use that freedom. As Paul asks, who can deliver me from this slavery? In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus presents a paradox by inviting us to take upon ourselves his yoke, his burden, because his burden is light, his yoke is easy. The paradox is that we are only free as our lives bend towards God's will. Freedom means not doing what we want to do, but being who God intends us to be, like Rebecca. So are we free? What's holding us back? This is a theological issue, and so it's an issue for us as the church. We are truly free only when all God's children are living as citizens in the kingdom of God together. Amen.
Now we come to a time of offering. If you are financially able, you can keep your offerings current during this pandemic by mailing them to the church at 202 North Franklin Street, Greensburg, Indiana, 47240, or by dropping them off in the mail slot at the entrance on Washington Street. Let us now dedicate these offerings to God. In deep gratitude for life and for all the blessings that come from you, we offer back to you some measure of what we have been given. Accept our offerings and use them and use us for the building up of your reign in this world. Amen. If you have not already procured your juice and bread, you can press pause now and bring them to your computer. When you are ready, press resume and the service will continue so that you can actively participate in the Lord's Supper wherever you are. This is the Lord's table and is open to all whom God draws in. You need not be a member of this congregation to receive communion. If you simply seek to follow Jesus and find fellowship in him, you are welcome. The Lord be with you. And also and with, you. with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift we them to the Lord. To the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. and praise. Creator of heaven and earth, we praise you. You commanded light to come out of darkness, created sea and dry land, ordered the vast universe and called it good. You made us in your image so that we can live with one another in mutual faith. You breathed into us the breath of life and gave us freedom to choose your way. From eternity, you have been faithful to your word. Almighty God, we are in awe of your ways. You sent your only son, Jesus, who died on a cross that we might live. By your power, he overcame death and rules this world to from your right hand, we know that he will overcome everything that hurts or divides us. Amen. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. The Lord Jesus on the night he died, took bread, gave thanks to God, broke it. He said that the bread symbolizes the church, which is broken for the world, take. Eat that which has been given, remembering me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the symbol of my new covenant with you, which is sealed in my blood, which is shed for you. Share this cup now, remembering me. Every time we share this bread and cup, we announce our belief that Christ died and was resurrected for the salvation of humankind.
Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace now and always. Amen.